Hello guys, I welcome all of you to today's farmcast. We'll discuss today five drugs of choice, one anti-cancer drug, and one question which was asked by a student with respect to revision. That is, what if I cannot finish revision of a subject within this stipulated time? Then what should I do? So I'll discuss that at last, right? So let's begin with the drugs of choice, guys. The first disorder for today is called as HIT or heparin induced thrombocytopenia now little bit about hit guys it's an important topic see the cause of hit is unfractionated heparin more than lmwh or low molecular weight heparin uh is a more common cause right and the thrombosis that is seen here uh, it is more venous as compared to arterial plus uh, females are more prone to hit as compared to males now coming to the drug of choice guys here the Parenteral direct thrombin inhibitors are more preferred and the DTIU of choice is ergotroban, right? Though we can use bivalirudine, desirudine, etc. as well. Other alternatives are drugs like fondaparinux can also be used, right? But remember, LMWH can never be used because it's, it, it is itself a cause of hit. Last point here is remember, warfarin. Warfarin is never used for treatment of hit. It is contraindicated rather because it can worsen because you remember right what warfarin does is it takes five days to produce anticoagulant effect and within these five days it can decrease protein c and s and rather cause a state where thrombosis can increase right so that is why it is contraindicated moving on to the second disorder for today it is toxicity of a drug and the drug is same drug we discussed heparin so heparin toxicity guys remember it's a very common one and i am pretty sure all of you know the answer that heparin toxicity drug of choice is rhodamine sulfate now one more thing you need to understand here that uh, if i'm using rhodamine sulfate it can be toxicity of either unfractionated heparin or low molecular weight heparin now in this case remember guys rhodamine sulfate is much much more active against unfractionated heparin as compared to low molecular weight heparin and it is not at all active against Fonda Pyrenox. So never use Prodamine Sulfate against Fonda Pyrenox. You can use against Unfractionated. You can also use against LMWH, but it would be much, much more active against UFH or Unfractionated Heparin. Now guys, moving on to the third disorder for today. It is an infection, Hepatitis B. So guys think, what is the drug of choice for Hepatitis B? Is it Tinofovir or is it Antacavir? What do you think? Choose one option. Put your money on one option. Guys, hepatitis B, remember the drug of choice, the best drug is Tinofovir because it is also active against lamivudine resistant strains. Whereas Antecavir, though it is the most potent drug against hepatitis B, it is not drug of choice because Antecavir, usually patients they develop resistance uh, in case of lamivudin resistant strains. One more aspect of hepatitis B is what if there is a super infection of D? If it is a case of B, hepatitis B with D, now remember, there is only one drug in this world that is active against hepatitis D and that is interferon alpha. So if it is a case of hepatitis B with D, then we go for interferon alpha, right? That, that becomes our drug of choice. Now moving on to hepatitis C. Guess hepatitis C, you, you know, right? Nowadays we have moved on from interferon alpha and ribavirin and nowadays we prefer the direct acting antivirals. Right, we have three classes of them I've discussed in detail in lecture and these direct acting antivirals these are drugs like sofosubuvir and other drugs we have here like dasabuvir, baclabuvir these are the drugs which are direct acting antivirals and they are the drugs which are preferred in hepatitis C right the reason being they are less toxic and it is easier to administer because they are oral drugs now guys coming to the last disorder for today it is a neoplastic disorder and that is hepatocellular carcinoma. Guys, hepatocellular carcinoma, the best drug or the drug of choice is a drug which blocks VEGF tyrosine kinase and the drug is sorafenib. So sorafenib guys remember is a drug of choice and this is the most important point that they can ask you in hepatocellular carcinoma. Though we have some alternatives to sorafenib and these are drugs like rigorafenib and lenvatenib. These are also tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And we have a new drug that is active against hepatocellular carcinoma that is nivolumab. Nivolumab it is a monoclonal antibody and uh, 
it is it can also be used in hepatocellular carcinoma nevertheless the one point which is most important here hepatocellular carcinoma if they ask you i think they will ask you what is the drug of choice your answer would be sorafenib now guys we have reached to our second part of pharmacals where i discuss one anti cancer drug every day today's anti cancer drug that i have chosen is irinotecan so the first thing you need to understand how does it act see irinotecan is a topo isomerase one inhibitor right and you know what is topo isomerase is uh, responsible for it removes the torsional stress in the dna so if i block it dna breaks down and dna cannot replicate which means irinotecan is specific for s phase use of irinotecan is quite simple guys it is used in colorectal cancer it can also be used in pancreatic cancer right and for both colorectal and pancreatic cancer we use a regimen where we combine 5 fluorouracil with oxaliplatin with irinotecan with folinic acid so these are folfox folfiri or folfirinox regimens which can be used in colorectal cancer plus can be used in drug resistant that is gemcitabine resistant pancreatic cancer because you know gemcitabine is the drug of choice for pancreatic cancer a uh, side effect of irinotecan guys remember it causes diarrhea and diarrhea that can be seen with irinotecan is treated with loperamide opioid loperamide is used for treatment of diarrhea because the diarrhea is non secretory non secretory means an increased motility is the cause of diarrhea now coming at last to contraindication guys contraindication of irinotecan it is a drug that is contraindicated in a disorder called as krigler najar syndrome So why do you think is irinotecan contraindicated in Krigler Najjar syndrome the simple answer is irinotecan is a drug that is metabolized by gluconeuridation and you know what happens in Krigler Najjar syndrome there is a problem with gluconeuridation so there would be an increased toxicity to irinotecan right guys so we have reached the last part of farmcast where i discuss one of your concerns or questions and today a student had asked me yesterday sir what if i cannot finish a revision of a subject in stipulated time Uh, should we just leave that part and move on with the routine and revise in the second revision or should we continue with it and delay our uh, other subjects so what should we do basically was asking me and fair enough guys it's a good doubt and even i went through it when you cannot finish a topic or a subject within stipulated time so you need to know one thing guys when you make a plan or a timetable for revision it should not be neck to neck for example i make a plan it should not be like that my plan and exactly today and tomorrow is my exam no it should not be like that i mean you should keep at least 5 to 7 days as cushion right it means that these 5 to 7 days in a revision time table they actually do not exist you so minus those 5 to 7 uh, days for example let us assume that 7th 7th of jan is my exam exam right so i'm just hypothetically i'm assuming 7th of jan is my exam which means what i will make a time table which will allow me to finish by 1st of jan so what i'm doing is the 6 to 7 days which i'm having between 1st and 7th i'm taking it as a cushion because you will not have all the days equal and there will be some unavoidable circumstances you might fall ill god forbid but you might fall ill or there would be some days where you are busy with something some activity is going on or something will happen well when you can have a pretty unproductive day and that can affect your you know confidence when when that comes so in those circumstances what i will do what i would have done in your place guys i would use that one or half day i would borrow one or half day from that cushion days so i'm having like, uh, like kind of a bank of 5 to 7 days i would borrow one day or half day and then i would revise in that period of time i would obviously you can continue with your revision and insert the leftover daily you know uh, topic daily for 2 to 2 to 3 hours in your revision but that would be you know a little bit it will complicate the things so rather i would love to finish it by borrowing some days so you can keep it as a bank of 5 to 7 days but do not get complacent by that that i have those 5 to 7 days means i can waste today no don't do that guys use those if it is entirely necessary right so guys don't get depressed if your revision is not ideal and you are not able to cover in time it happens with everybody guys you have anybody in this world will have a have one off day right and we always uh, try to overdo ourselves while revising we set the goals higher and that is not a bad thing because in this due process it overall increases our productivity uh, with respect to time 
right so believe in yourself guys and keep marching ahead don't get depressed by all such kind of things where you are having some bad days or an off day where your productivity is not matching up to your standard not a problem happens with everybody you are no different right guys so that's all for today guys if you have any such kind of doubts or queries with related to your preparation you can always drop in the comment box and i'll be happy to incorporate your doubt in one of my next farmcasts so guys take care bye bye this is dr ranjan with you